Hi friends, today we start lecture 70 in the helicopter dynamics course and today I'm going to discuss flap lag bending coupled motion. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now as you can see we have been progressively increasing the modeling complexity for the rotor dynamics problem. So now we are going to look at flap bending and lag bending coupled motion and this is for an elastic beam blade and so it is going through in plane and out of plane bending now most of you are familiar with out of plane bending motion which is typically the flap motion and this is the bending usually present in most mechanics of materials or strength of materials books the in plane bending is of course in the lag direction and this is somewhat different and here the in plane bending becomes more complicated and create some nonlinear terms because of Coriolis force. So that's the main impact or novelty of this particular lecture. So let's look at the free body diagrams of the blade in flap and lag. So let's look at the flap part first. So essentially you have the rotating blade here. And remember from our previous discussion on the flapping blade, you have the centrifugal force the inertia force, the aerodynamic force. Now, here we consider a section at a distance rho from the axis of rotation, and we take one more section r, and what we are going to do is we are going to take the moment at r, and we are going to use it to derive the equation of motion for this plate. So, the three forces, centrifugal force, IF, inertia force, and the aerodynamic force are the same as they were for the pure flapping blade with no lag motion. Now the lag motion is going to cause this Coriolis force. So again, you can see the Coriolis force is opposite to the direction of the centrifugal force. So it's going to have a negative impact here. And again, the moment arm is this particular distance here. So in the lag direction, we have the rotation speed in this direction. We have the lag displacement VR at station R. We have the lag displacement V rho at station rho. We have the usual centrifugal force, aerodynamic force, and the inertia force as before for the lag motion. And now we have two new Coriolis forces. One of these Coriolis forces will result from the V dot term. And the second Coriolis force will result from the radial shortening of the blade. So radial shortening is a phenomenon which happens because the blade happens to be flexible. So because it is uh, bending, it essentially also shortens. And that leads to a velocity term which causes this Coriolis force too. So let's look at all the forces in the flap bending direction. So as I mentioned before, the inertia force term mw double dot d rho arm rho minus r at r. This is exactly same as for a flapping blade. Centrifugal force also remains same. So essentially you have a centrifugal force term m rotation speed square rho d rho arm would be w rho minus w r. The aerodynamic force is the same as the flapping blade, so it's Fc into d rho arm rho minus r. Now what is new is this Coriolis force term. And you can clearly see here it is coming because of this velocity component V dot, and it's 2m into rotation speed into V dot into d rho, and the arm is W rho minus W r. Now like I mentioned in the previous slide, essentially it acts in the opposite direction to the centrifugal force and will have the same moment arm. So when we take the moments at station R, that is MXR, uh, essentially that becomes integral small r to capital R, capital R being the radius of the blade. And so then you have the AF is going up, the inertia force is going down, so these two terms into rho minus r, and then you have the centrifugal force, and then negative is the Coriolis force here. These are in two different direction. And then the moment arm of this is W rho minus WR. 
So this is the expression for the flapping bending moment at station R. Now the next thing we are going to do is to derive a similar expression for the lag bending moment. So before we do that, let us take a look at all the forces in the lag direction. So we start with IF. So it is MV double dot D rho. We have the centrifugal force term M rotation speed square rho D rho and the aerodynamic force term FX into D rho FX largely coming from the drag forcing. Now the new terms are Coriolis force one, which is two M rotation speed V dot. And then we have a Coriolis force two, which is a new term, which I'll explain in the next couple of slides. And this term is coming from radial shortening. So these are the two new terms which are present in the lag bending because of the presence of Coriolis forces. So let's take a look at the Coriolis force two term which is the Coriolis force caused by radial shortening of the blade. Now, whenever you have the presence of both V and W, and these are the in-plane and out-of-plane displacements, they produce a radial shortening of the blade length. So that's equal to the integral zero to L, V dash square plus W dash square, negative half of this term here. So essentially the blade is getting shortened. And what we do is if we take a derivative of this component with respect to time, we get this equation here. So this is zero to rho here, and then you have this in this term. So this is the radial velocity, and this radial velocity is going to also create a centrifugal force. Recall from the Coriolis force terms that these radial velocities lead to Coriolis forces. So that's a Coriolis force, not a centrifugal force. So result is a Coriolis force in the in-plane direction. And so we have that term, that's the genesis of the Coriolis force two. So we get the lag moment at station R and therefore we are going to get the usual aerodynamic force minus inertia force term. We get the centrifugal force term here. We get the first Coriolis term here. We get the second Coriolis term here. Now that we have obtained both the flap and lag moments at station R, we can use the differential equation for this problem. So we take the basic differential equation in the flap direction and in the lag direction. Okay, And what we are going to do is now we are going to have to differentiate this mx and this mz twice, and then we equate it to these particular values. So that's going to give us the equation. Now, if you want to do this integral twice, you have to integrate something or you have to essentially differentiate something which is within the integral sign. So we are going to differentiate this term twice here. So to do that, if you recall from our previous discussion on the lag problem, that is going to require Leibniz theorem. So we use Leibniz theorem here again if you are not familiar, just review that part. But what we are interested in is the end result of all these mathematics. And so the end result of this mathematics are these two nice differential equations. Now let's take a good look at these equations. Suppose this blade had no rotation, then you would have the usual equation only having the EIX W double dash double dash term and the MW double dot term and the right hand side forcing. So the presence of rotation brings in these two terms. Now the square term, the rotation speed square term, you know very well it's the centrifugal force term that was there previously also in the pure flap motion. And what is new is this V dot based term, which is the Coriolis term. So this also is a nonlinear term because you have W dot and you have a V dot and these two terms are multiplied together. Now the second equation is for the lag. And again, in the lag, if you just had the EIZ and the M term, you would essentially have a non-rotating blade. Now, because of just centrifugal force, you would have the rotation squared term here. So that would be the one element of the centrifugal force. And then one more part of the centrifugal force would come, force would come from this omega squared term here. Now, Coriolis comes into these two terms here, and you can clearly see that this is a nonlinear term. You have a V dash and a V dot, 
and also you have nonlinear terms here. Now, an easy way to figure out what is a Coriolis force in most equations is if there is presence of one rotation speed in those terms, and if there is a presence of a rotation square, then that generally means it's a centrifugal force. We can clearly see some of the good points about the dimensional form of the equation because the rotation speed is thrown at you in these equations. So looking carefully at these equations, we clearly see that these are coupled elastic plate flap lag equations. And the equations are coupled because in the W equation or in the flap equation, you have the presence of the V dot term here. And in the V equation or the lag equation, you have the presence of the W dot terms here. So that essentially couples this equation. Now, these couplings are due to Coriolis terms and you know you cannot just remove these couplings. So therefore you have to manage these equations with the couplings included and you have to do all kind of nonlinear solutions for solving these systems. Now essentially uh, both Ix and Iz need to be calculated and you can calculate these based on the section. So typically you would have an airfoil section and this would be the z direction with w and this is the x direction with v and so ix would essentially refer to the integral here and iz would refer to the integral here and so what you would need to do is uh, calculate these integrals and then get these particular values so some Procedure may be required here in terms of numerical integration. Very often you may have some software which can calculate these integrals for you. So finally, once we have the differential equations, if you want to solve it, we are going to require boundary conditions. And if we have a cantilever type or fixed boundary condition, then at R is zero, V and W would be zero. So that is brought about by geometry because your blade is fixed here at the root. and Secondly, remember that the slope is going to be zero. That is also a fixed boundary condition, and that is a sign of the fixed boundary condition. Now, if we come to the bending moment side of the equation, the bending moment is going to be zero, and the shear force is going to be zero. So these are the two forces which you are going to get, and these derivatives are all going to be equal to zero. So this essentially is the typical situation which we call a cantilevered beam or a hingeless rotor and therefore for a hingeless rotor this is a pretty good model for a rotor blade so we have now need four boundary conditions in flap and lag and we have two fourth order partial differential equations so that's essentially the flap lag coupled bending problem so this was my video today on the flap lag coupled bending and you clearly saw that the Coriolis forces are those terms which cause all the coupling between these two equations and these couplings are quite complicated mathematically and they need to be included because it's not like you can just neglect them because deflections are large or something like that. These are essential couplings that are coming from the Coriolis terms because of the rotation speed. So this is one of the reasons why helicopter dynamics tends to get very complicated as far as the mathematics is concerned. And this mathematics is all very classical in terms of differential equations and so on. So a lot of people like these kind of differential equation. A lot of these problems have been solved a long time before because like I said, these are all very classical problems. People used to spend a lot of time solving nonlinear dynamic system in yesteryears. But today there are a bunch of numerical and computational software also which can solve some of these equations for you. So I will stop here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you soon.